So. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, so, and it goes up again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, uh, that guy. Could you, could you close it all? <laughs> it, it closed. It closed. It's it's fine. Yeah. Right. fine. Okay. So, we're trying to reduce the uh, bureaucracy in the beginning. So, we'll just have a small slide deck here for, from the chairs. But uh, some guru meditation. Please inhale all the necessary requirements uh, stated in the note well, right? Everything you say here can and will be used against you in a draft of law. Um, and I think everybody here has already uh, tried to be very helpful in registering themselves by opening the application on the phone or the notebook or uh, kind of scanning the QR code so that you all shall be rightfully counted uh, for presence in this room so that we don't have to sit in a small corner next time. Okay, and also uh, important third party announcement, the IETF is again looking for a great leadership and um, they uh, did uh, initially claim they closed the feedback, but it's actually open and there are also a few uh, really uh, late comers like IETF chair and um, application area, but all the feedback is still open. So please try to get uh, feedback about people that you know and had experience with um, in, into NOMCOM. That's very important for the IETF overall. Okay, and uh, with that being said, I um, uh, would like to start going through the working documents uh, without uh, slots, um, because those are also the ones that are already in a state where they're uh, nearing their end of life in, in the working group and getting punted to our wonderful AD. Um, so the first one being Brewski Cloud. So we did uh, push a little bit, got all the IPR disclosures. So Sheng will be uh, doing the Shepherd write-up, and that should hopefully mean that uh, uh, with anything small being there, uh, being fixed, that uh, we can get it to the ADQ. And uh, Brewski Cloud also doesn't have uh, dependencies um, against uh, any of the other ongoing Brewski documents, so that document could uh, go out fairly uh, soon. Um, on the opposite end of, of the spectrum, we've got um, RFC 8366 BIS, which is uh, kind of the last one of uh, the uh, Brewski cluster. Uh, we did get a very good um, Shepherd review from um, Alex Clem, and so uh, the co-authors discussed with it. So there is uh, some good amount of work to be done to see which of the feedback is actually feasible so that we're not breaking any backward compatibility. And that's unfortunately a little bit of a guessing game because the uh, tool chains for Yang uh, are not really all that uh, uh, good so far. So we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully have to see what uh, the original Yang RFC says, but um, didn't want to go into detail of that because we haven't uh, done the work yet, but uh, the Shepherd review and the initial uh, review with him uh, was running. So we, we, we did uh, invest some good cycles there. Um, the uh, Anima network service auto uh, deployment. Um, so um, we had, um, uh, some discussions with that, and um, given how um, the authors didn't have time and, and, and the reviewers also not, not time to invest uh, up to this point, we may want to uh, park those uh, up to uh, maybe one or two IETFs, as we said at IETF 117, purely to serialize the work, because from the two uh, documents here on the page um, where we wanted to concentrate on first finishing the uh, grass distribution, um, where we also got uh, a, a refresh only, but uh, we did review very much from the chair side also the Shepherd feedback and discuss that and are going to propose uh, fixes um, for um, the document so that it hopefully can pass through the Shepherd um, and then um, kind of uh, finalize uh, in the working group and go to the AD review. So that's the um, working group uh, document with, without slots. Overall, uh, Bruski, we, we did explain the cluster, um, and uh, at ITF 117, uh, we also initiated re-review from all the early reviews that we had done on the documents, which all had uh, really ugly, you know, um, reds and similar bad colors. So now we got, uh, especially Bruski AE and, and the other documents, uh, refreshed um, uh, early reviews for um, working group last call. So uh, with that being said, that means um, we can also uh, progress Brewski AE. So Shepard will do uh, now the uh, the Shepard right, but I think that's me. Um, it's kind of nicely anonymized here on the slides. We did that. 
Um, and so that we can then also uh, quickly finish that and bring that up also to, to AD um, and doesn't have other de response, uh, 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 dependencies, I think will be um, hopefully passing through um, before the end of the term of the AD, uh, uh, two of these uh, Brewski RFCs. Um, there is a proposal for the restructuring of the existing Brewski work to also speed up the other documents uh, by moving out uh, some of the existing uh, advanced discovery text, so that's what is, is, is a major part of, you know, the technical discussion um, uh, this time around. Um, we're also um, wanted to, to remind, just because we had one hour here only, we do welcome new work, um, and especially for the non brewski areas, right, our charter is much wider, um, so please uh, propose and discuss that on the NMI mailing list in time before the IETF working group meeting schedule, because what happened is that um, some of these ideas uh, weren't discussed on the, on the mailing list. And uh, when two months ago, I was asking, uh, can we please see what we want to talk about in this working group meeting? There was nothing more than this urgent work that we had, but that fits into one hour slot. And we've always been reminded that uh, the IETF week is fairly overloaded, so we only reserve time for one hour. So please, if you have new work, bring it early to uh, the mailing list so that we can discuss it more. I've put uh, a little bit of such new work um, on the um, agenda, but it may likely run out of time, but at least, you know, they'll be in the proceedings and hopefully there, there'll be discussion after the meeting then. And yeah, so everything else of all the wonderful procedures that we have, we don't have time this time around, but uh, if you're, you know, new here and don't know it, uh, feel, feel free to reach out to the chairs afterwards. So, and with that, we're going to the next slot, and that would be, who's next here? Uh, stop sharing slides, sharing slides again. Um, it's A. okay, let me bring up the slides, NMA slides, <coughs> open the selection. Yes, on the mm -hmm. Thank you. So I'm presenting this also on behalf of my co-authors, Hendrik and Stefan, who is online. And this time is my first time at AITF directly. So my first uh, in-person presentation, yeah. Um, <clears throat> next slide, please. I have two of slides. One is uh, what happened recently. Um, working the last call was already in uh, April and there was only minor comments and they were already handled pretty soon. And then we had two further rounds of the young directors review and the sector review. And gladly, uh, a couple of days back, mm -hmm. um, the second review was also done. So thanks, uh, Barry, for that. Um, so these are finished uh, and the result is ready. Um, there has been one issue open for quite a while and we, it took some effort and some time to to, to do the discussion and get to some nice output, but finally there is one. And the issue um, is, uh, yeah, that uh, the existing discovery mechanism of Wooski doesn't really cover uh, extended feature sets, for example, of registers. In this case, it's a, um, yeah, it's a rich enrollment protocol in, in a e capable register would be able to support. and. And, and we figured, so, okay, this is really something that uh, should not be handled in the AE draft specifically, but as a more general topic to be handled elsewhere. And there's a nice upcoming promising draft, uh, Brewski Discovery, handling that. So in Brewski AE, we basically just refer to that draft. And then, of course, we have a secondary problem. Uh, this draft, uh, or it is not yet RC, and it, even if so, or um, what else uh, other um, solution might maybe out there, uh, implementation may lacking uh, the new, uh, this new um, mechanism. So we also needed a uh, fallback strategy for existing implementations. Um, and there, in the end, we came up with a very simple, nice solution, namely to use a specific service the service name apart from Brewski Registrar, for example, Brewski Registrar CMP. Um, just in the absence of the more capable, more general mechanism to become later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in, in the latest version of the document, 06, uh, uh, I, so far we have 
just uh, done a preliminary version of a uh, section on this topic, and this needs to be updated. I will do this very soon after some internal feedback. And apart from that, we just uh, made explicit some minor extra um, comments. And for example, note that when a uh, registrar delegates uh, enrollment um, authorization checks, then of course the RA behind also needs to have the uh, required information to, uh, to do these checks. And we also mentioned that the status telemetry uh, uh, to be done with the mother voucher for the mother voucher is the same as in standard risky. Um, so far, any comments, questions on the slide? If not, next slide, please. Yeah, so the status overall is that we, we are well past working group as call. We have the shepherd wrap right up at least in the initial version of it. Um, and we have the rev two reviews needed. And the only smaller open to do is to finalize the section about the discovery that I just mentioned. And then the finally ready for AD review. Ready. Yeah. That's good. Right. my talk. Okay, backup slides. Okay. Yep. All the wonderful stuff we're not allowed to put into. <laughs> yeah, at least not in color. <laughs> All right, let's not bring up that. Uh... Favorite uh, red hole from Tolis. Have you already done all the red map? I, I didn't say it online. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not quite sure if if then it was before. Um, it, no, I think then maybe that's. I think in my slide I also said I still need to do that. I, yeah, I, I mean, I was I was mm -hmm. doing earlier uh, review the, of, uh, of the details. Yes, but, yeah. but you didn't. Yeah, so probably this this one is is wrong, and I I have this exactly. On the list, I think mm -hmm. this is on the top of this to-do section. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you should keep on on hand. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. uh, afterwards, so, mm -hmm. you know, maybe before. I'll bring more chocolate. Yeah. A, well, yeah. kind of, okay. But and he's Shepherd, a surprise man, Shepherd so Ryder. you know, push him before the Christmas if you don't hear in November, anything. In mm -hmm. November, in November, that, that, that will happen. November so. is a good time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. November is good time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait. So, who's next? Uh, JWS. JWS. Actually, it does work. So, hello, everybody. Also from my side, uh, Thomas Werner. So, quick update on JWS voucher. So, um, there is no new content from last ITF. So, and what we what we did is. Can you go to the next slide, mm -hmm. please? Um, so to recall, uh, what we did is uh, we de de defined a JWS um, uh, voucher format. Um, it's same to the already existing CMS voucher in uh, 8366. There are no young changes to that, and uh, this format is already used in Bruski Prime or Bruski PRM. Next slide, please. So um, we did a, a working group last call before um, IDF 116. Then uh, in July, uh, the Shepard write-up happened. And uh, open is the IANA registration for the um, application voucher JWS plus JSON. Um, but the document is ready for AD review and indoor op testing is welcome can also happen together with Bruski PRM for those of you who are, who are interested. That's all. I think this uh, this 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 one registration is 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 the crappy problem, right? Because we can't get the expert to reply to that, Michael. Is that right? And the resolution is we just take hostages here and put them in the room before Friday night night or. Um. Michael at the mic. Um, yeah, so we can go ahead with that as it is. Okay. Okay. Um, if we made the decision that we wanted voucher plus JDWS plus JSON mm -hmm. or some other variations in the Seabor Cozy kind of space, then we get into the media man, not sure what they're doing yet. 
Wait, 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 sorry. This this one that's that's this here, one's that, fine. That's one is this fine. This one's yeah. fine, but we do need to get a reply from the designated experts, which we may need to yes, get hostages, take hostages for it to get them to reply. Uh, that's mostly wait, wait a second. So is it fine now or do we need to get the reply first? Mm. Why why does this need to happen before kind of going to IETF review for We do not need to have get this before IETF okay. review. We would we would be we would be smart to start the process so that we're not waiting a lot later yep. and so that any text that happens uh usually you get you want an early review from media man i think we did email medium man some many months ago yeah i believe yeah. um so um they need a they've only got one working group chair no co-chair so but that doesn't seem to help because the experts are is not the working group chair. Anyway. But it's also the working group chair has to yeah. wield the whip, right? Yeah. right. Um, so, but but so yes, we need expert review for that. If we wanted, and we have discussed having two pluses or more than right. one two pluses in it, but that then requires that we wait for them to decide what their process and what does it even mean. Yeah, but in right. the end, we should simply move forward. And we should just simply that, move forward. That yes. this thing can wait all the way up to the end in of IESG review when IANA says these folks haven't approved this stuff, and then it's right. they're really put under pressure. Right, um, right. But but um, it's entirely likely that we might also cycle with our AD waiting for our AD to do that. Is our AD in the room? <laughs> cool. It's, you're behind it's me. In the dark I don't know. It depends on whether you're going to want us to have uh, gotten our media approved or not. You won't care. Good. Uh, so, Rob Wilson. So, no, I agree with Tillis that I think it just makes sense to just pass it on through the process. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we should send an email to Media Man at the time it gets, goes to ITF last call and say, look, just it's you know it's hit the stage, and yeah. then try and push it along as much as possible. But. I mean, in, in the original discussion in IETF 116, um, my understanding was JWS voucher isn't needed for anything than uh, the um, other Brewski drafts, right? So we're, we're not in a hurry to send this out uh, in, in so far that by itself it doesn't give anything. But um, I mean, we're, we're, we're happy to push it out through um, as, as soon as you want, but just don't come later and have a late last last minute change requirements, right? So I mean, that's I think for us it doesn't matter. And and obviously bear in mind I'm stepping down in March, so yeah. anything sooner rather than later is better to have. Always going to otherwise going to end up waiting after March. So if it's yeah, close sure. to that deadline, yeah, I'll understood. push it on to the next day, or or because it doesn't make sense otherwise. Uh -huh. Okay, and then the next one. Let me guess. Uh, JWS. Bruski with pledge in responder mode, PRM? Am I right? Yep, that okay. will be my turn. Am I audible? Yeah, yep. go ahead. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, so uh, that is a status update on uh, Bruski with pledge in responder mode. So next slide, please. So we updated the draft shortly before the, the IETF addressing the remaining issues from working group last call, which was done in March this year and also some further issues that have been raised during the design team discussion. I, I put the most uh, most important changes, so the technical issues, essentially on that slide. Uh, but uh, I would like to skip that that information because it's, it's mostly uh, repeating what we already discussed uh, in the design team, and it's also in the GitHub discussion visible. So there are two open issues for which we already have proposed a solution and discussed that in the design team. But I would like to share that open issue or those open issues here and also the resolution we have for that. So it's also going back to the uh, discovery. Uh, if you remember in Ruski PRM, we are essentially uh, reversing the communication model. So the pledge is the server and the registrar is the client that is essentially uh, talking to the pledge, not the other way around as we have it in Ruski. So for that, we introduced a, a registrar agent which uh, basically is the one who is in contact with the pledge and providing the collected information further to the registrar. So it's some kind of, depending on the mode the registrar agent is operating in, it might be a nomadic device that goes back and forth between the pledge and the registrar, uh, or it might be co-located with the registrar. So in any case, we have some kind of uh, discovery of the uh, registrar by the registrar agent, and for the 
for Brewski PRM, we essentially stated here that we expect that there is uh, already some upfront exchange uh, of information, like for instance, the serial numbers of the pledges to be discovered uh, and further information. So there is already a trust relation between the registrar and the registrar agent. And uh, we assume that uh, they know where to find the, so that the registrar agent knows where to find the registrar. Uh, so that is a, a assumed approach that we have here so that it is uh, fixed by configuration. And if there is uh, further discovery necessary between a registrar and uh, a registrar agent and the registrar, then we refer to the new ID Brewski discovery, uh, which will be discussed later on in, in the session. So from that, that was the issue that, that came up in the discussion also in the design team. And the proposal is to keep the simple assumption in PRM uh, that uh, the registrar and the registrar agent are uh, known by configuration and refer to Brewski uh, discovery for any case where an enhanced discovery is necessary. So enhanced discovery might be uh, enhanced feature sets or, or uh, further information like uh, different voucher formats. So we are using JWS voucher, um, but there might be other formats coming up in the, in the future. So based on that, uh, the proposal is to, to keep, to go forward with, with uh, that proposal to solve the open issue 79. Any remarks? Yeah, I think the, just a little bit um, sh shortened here, right? So the, the whole mm -hmm. point was trying to figure out what's the minimum necessary to get this deployed. And for that, it's perfectly fine to have it configured for the registrar. And as soon as you do need to have, I think, multiple registrars or the like or so, then that's Brewski, Brewski registrar. So we don't need to solve the advanced cases in right. PRM. Yeah. Yep. Correct. So we would go forward with that. And then we have on the next slide, we have the second open issue that also relates to uh, discovery, but this time uh, to the discovery of pledges by the registrar agent. So currently the draft assumes that we are using DNSSD with MDNS in, in two different ways. So one way is the, the uh, registrar agent already knows up front which pledges to, to bootstrap or uh, which pledges to bootstrap. In that case, uh, he would utilize the product serial number that he has configured to discover specific pledges. He may also use uh, just the underscore Brewski pledge as shown in the second bullet point to discover available pledges for bootstrapping. At the end, he, he always has to, to make a first decision based on uh, the list of configured serial numbers for pledges for bootstrapping. So that is uh, also, as in the case before, the simple approach uh, to, do this, to do the discovery. Uh, the Brewski discovery ID, as referenced here, describes a more versatile approach that may not only be used, uh, be using uh, MDNS, but also uh, other approaches like GRASP. So therefore, we, we would state the simple discovery, or we, we would stick with simple discovery in the Brewski PRM by using just the, the product serial numbers and MDNS as some kind of minimal solution and also refer pro, to Brewski discovery for more enhanced discovery. Right. Yeah, thanks. So I, I, I had a longer discussion about all these details uh, with George Cheshire on uh, on Saturday because there were a couple of things that I was worried about reading at this against the NSSD draft but mm -hmm. we discussed this on Monday in, in in our site meeting already so this is perfectly fine the um the text is probably a little bit terse so the uh, Brewski discovery has uh, the same stuff with much more detailed and refined and more generalized so and let's hope that that this goes through and that we don't have to counterfeit much more of these examples and other details into this text but we'll see that during ISG review um, mm -hmm. if, if somebody really knows DNS SD well, then this is fine. Otherwise, Brewski Discovery has all the gory details for people who are starting to implement that for the first time around. That's, yeah. that's how I would describe it. Mm -hmm. by, by, by the way, uh, after the discussion on Monday that we had uh, regarding the discovery, I did an update of the draft, but only in the, on the GitHub of the Anima Working Group. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we, we uh, align uh, mm -hmm. the new text in the, in the design team, then uh, I can submit the new version. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. 
I okay. think, except for words missing of kind, kind of Shepard last review, I think technically yeah. this, this should all be fine. Okay. So then there is just one, one last slide. Uh, so the next steps is the finalization of the two open issues that I've shown on the slides before. Working group last call has been done uh, before uh, 116. Uh, IoT deer review, early review was already done. The sector early review was done, but uh, it was, I think it was ready with NITs. Uh, we addressed those NITs and I think uh, you, you uh, asked Charlie Kaufman to do the sector review again, but that hasn't happened yet. So that needs to be updated. So I think uh, for all the drafts, by the way, one comment, it's, it's always good to, to, you know, even put in the draft in some section, please remove any type of, you know, information about implementations, interoperability, those things that the poor shepherd needs are in the write up because there are questions about uh, that part so that we can copy mm -hmm. that as shepherds over from the draft, uh, then we don't need to dig that up from some other place. Uh, that's that's marked in the draft. So the history and also the implementation details that is marked in the draft for uh, please remove before publishing. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So then uh, Matthias Kovac, he's uh, the shepherd. Uh, he would go ahead and do the write-up afterwards. It might be that we have some some kind of restructuring in the document, but the intention there is more to have to have a better way through the document uh, for for the reader, not changing uh, technical content there. And afterwards, uh, we think it's ready for ID review. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was the last slide, I guess. Yep. Okay. Excellent. So, what's next? Yep. Okay, I'll do. Oh no. Again, these way too small beer cans. Okay, <laughs> Esko Dijk here on the mic. So I will present uh, Constraint Brewski or C Brewski as we are now adopting this new acronym. You can see that one, uh, two bottles or cans of beer have been added to the picture. So with local beers for Prague, so you can just keep expanding it. <laughs> small. Yeah, so these are the Brewskis uh, actually. Yeah, they are quite small in fact, as you can see. So uh, going on to the next slide. So um, should I control it or do you? No, okay. Yeah, another acronym was enlisted here. So you could also say it's Co-op Brewski. So just uh, as another uh, <laughs> likely uh, acronym explanation. Next slide, please. So just as a recap, what is this about? So we uh, have Brewski Classic, basically. And what we do is we want to make it suitable for constraint IoT devices and networks. So there's a schematic uh, shown here in the diagram. So we have a, a constraint side, which is the local network where co-op is used by devices. In this example, they are six lopan based devices in the mesh network. And on the right side, from the registrar to the MASA, uh, it can still be the HTTPS uh, communication as we defined. So now this Brewski pledge is a constraint device here on the bottom left that wants to onboard and wants to do that via a joint proxy and via the registrar that is on site. So this is just as an overview of what, what we do. Next slide, please. So we only focus here uh, on the, well, let's say important open issues that I, I see, not on the progress. So you can see that in the backup slides uh, in this deck, but I will not go over it. So the issue one listed here is basically the yeah, different variations that we have about discovery. Um, I think this relates also to the discussion we had earlier this week, so the site meeting and also the issue that came up in all the previous drafts. So <laughs> we have this variation in discovery and I think we're moving towards solutions here. So that's good. This is just a recap, um, yeah, what is, something to consider is that there is different ways to discover it. So you can see in the picture, the top picture is basically the pledge trying to locally discover the joint proxy. So this is, a, for example, a six slope on mesh network. So it could have its own, let's say, network specific way of discovery. 
And that's option four in the first list. So network specific, uh, I think this threads mesh networking uses something specific and six dish has something specific, I think. Uh, but there are other options as well. So you could say we're going to use uh, unsecured uh, co-op discovery. So that's link local multicast requests. We can do MDNS. That's uh, the same communication pattern. It could also be a uh, grasp, but that's currently, uh, I think only well-defined in the context of uh, like say these, these autonomous networks, right? So where you have a control plane that needs to bootstrap Maybe not for generic uh, networks where you have, uh, let's say, a data plane and control plane all in one. So, but there is some variation there. And on the bottom picture, you can see, well, we have a similar variation possible for the other discovery action. So this is the joint proxy that needs to find the registrar. So this is not link local anymore. That needs to go over potentially multiple uh, radio hops. Uh, it could also be, uh, yeah, via IP routers, uh, multiple hops. So it's um, the reason why we have different type of discovery here. It's not linked local anymore. So there's some other approaches, like you could use a uh, core resource directory. Uh, once you know where to find the resource directory, you can query it. Okay, where is my registrar? So that could be an approach. Um, DNS SD is another approach. So you do a DNS query with the same question, okay, where is services of type registrar? Uh, Grasp can be used, that's also for multi-hop, um, yeah, kind of flooding of uh, announcements. So you can uh, also discover registrars that way and select one. Could also be something network specific, which is, um, could be, for example, that, uh, for example, in Thread, there is some network management data that gets flooded to all the nodes in the mesh network. And you could have a pointer in that management data saying where, where to find this registrar, just as an example. So this gives you lots of combinations because you could even say, uh, I want to combine uh, these things. So normally if you use co-op discovery on the, on the first use case, you would also use co-op co or core discovery on the second use case, but it's not necessarily the case. You could also mix and match that would become weird because you get a lot of different combinations. Uh, maybe next slide, just to explain a bit more about the problem there. Um, yeah, the, the problem is that, of course, the different parties, that's the first two bullets, must support the same discovery method. Otherwise, you don't have interoperability. So the pledge asks in a certain way with a certain protocol, like, hey, can I join? And then the join proxy needs to support that same protocol. Um, Ideally, we don't want in single deployments uh, to mix these discovery uh, protocols because that's like complexity that no one uh, actually wants to have. So ideally, uh, all the devices in a deployment should, should agree on a single method. But then again, um, yeah, in ITF, we have these two multiple methods. So how, how to get out of that? So, <laughs> so maybe it's a question to consider, are we okay with, with allowing in principle multiple discovery methods here? If we say yes, that's okay, then it applies that, that yeah, you don't have necessarily interoperability unless some other future document or organization says, okay, this is what we're going to use. So you must use co-op discovery or you must use MDNS and DNS DST, or you must use GRASP in this case where it's an, uh, yeah, maybe different use case where that's uh, suitable. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm just assuming for the moment that the answer is yes, we, we do allow these multiple approaches and then we have, next slide. <laughs> Can I just uh, make a comment here? Yeah, sure. So I, I think all these different uh, variations equally apply to the non-constrained Bruski, right? So we have yeah. this, this problem everywhere. Um, right. And uh, what we basically did was that in Bruski itself, we also were hand uh, waving with uh, very little detail. Um, and then it was the, um, ACP, which was one particular type of network deployment yeah. for the ANI that basically said you must use GRASP. That's right. right? Yeah. So in the same way, I think that um, we most likely would want to, I think hopefully in constraint Bruski only talk about one single discovery, the minimum that you would like to see anybody who doesn't have a better opinion right. to use. And yeah. I, maybe that should really be the core LF, the, uh, the, the co-op discovery. Yeah. Um, because that's kind of new and best matching the constraint environment, right? That's what it's built for, even if, you know, people like um, 
matter and threat haven't selected it, right? But it's kind of the, the typical constraint solution in the IETF. And then all these other variations will get through uh, the Brewski discovery uh, uh, document, for example. And obviously, I think the overview that you have here is quite nice. And um, I think in general, we, we need to say that different type of network environments uh, need to basically define the standards uh, for yep. discovery that they want to have for interoperability because the service provider will never do the same thing as a small constraint right. network or as an enterprise or so. We have variations. We've got to live with it yep. and just uh, create kind of a con understandable and what's the process to make, uh, make the choices, right? So that we That's write right, that yep. also into the discovery document, please. Good. Uh, Rob Wilson as a contributor. Yep. Um, so uh, I, I think one of the comments I'm supposed to hear is that an RSC is finished not when there's nothing else to add in, but when there's nothing else to take out. So to get down to the minimal size. So uh, I'm slightly worried when you've got lots of these different discovery methods that, as you say, it, it sort of reduces interrupt because you have to mix the different things, mix and match. I think if I understand what Telus is saying, he's sort of suggesting maybe you should have a should statement, a 21199 should saying, at least specifying you, sh you should use the co-op based one unless you have a better reason to choose something else. And to yes. me, that would sound like a pragmatic compromise yes. through this that we get yep. get some some level of expectation, but there's still flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was on the next slide, by the way. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll just have a look there. <laughs> if that's the case. <laughs> yeah, so that's the possible proposal here. Um, yeah, so to, to get the complete issue of all these different variations to get it out of scope of this document. And we say, okay, here we define one yeah. recommended variant which is uh, using co-op discovery and core link format yeah. and also with, with co-op based uh, resource directory for the next yeah. discovery step and then leave any further yeah. optimization to this uh, future document uh, and keeping in mind that i think different yeah markets will will probably choose different uh, solutions but in a way that that's yeah you don't have interoperability at, at the radio level as well huh? so if you have a thread radio and a 60s radio they, they will never talk to each other so so in that case it's fine if they also use a different discovery mechanism because um yeah you anyway don't have interoperability <laughs> from the link layer or sorry from the physical layer so so yeah so that's not not bad in that case uh, at least we make it easy to, to yeah. adapt this technology to, to different cases. I think that should be our goal then. I think the, uh, the, th the, the only thing we want to make sure is that uh, the um, co-op discovery that we have, that we keep in, in the document, that yeah. we do understand it will be forward compatible with the Brucey right. discovery in the same way as for DNS, SD, um, and, and GRASP. I'm, I'm showing uh, how, yeah. how we make sure that they're backward compatible with existing RFC 8995 definition so that's that's yep. the only question yeah i think that's something to to uh, take care of so we mm -hmm. should not finish this document too too quickly in a way that we uh, <laughs> hamper ourselves with it yeah this discovery work that's still ongoing i think we should but finish should this be... issue as soon as 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 as, as you're clear that yeah. um whatever kind of we have sufficiently good choices for brewski discovery that we can make it backward compatible what we decide here right so and and this this is pretty much set. I think we would add additional information in the absence of that information. Brewski dis dis discovery will say that the same information is discovered in what's here, right? Yeah. So this this is this is the simple default, you know, yeah. with with the the, right. the preset. So I, I think we can discuss discuss it in the Brewski discovery slot. So yeah, that's yeah. Fine. Uh, and I also recommend you to finish this as soon as you can mm -hmm. uh, with the single defined uh, as default. Yep, yep. Uh, that's one of the reasons we are talking about to have another mm -hmm. uh, discovery uh, document separate, uh, but without any dependency. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the new document will be, uh, you know, refer you as the normative uh, document, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't wait right. for the, exactly. the new document and you shouldn't uh, you, you know, reference to the new document as uh, normative. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. the, the reference. Yep. Otherwise, you are slow, you, you're done. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That, that seems to be a good uh, proposal then. And that this is what I propose here. Mm -hmm. so maybe uh, if you have time, so quickly have a look at uh, issue two. Okay. Um, that was also one that was still open uh, on the issues list. Um, 
So the current draft had a some of somewhat of a simplification of Brewski. Uh, this allows a pledge to be implemented in a simpler way, so that it only gets one domain CA certificate from the registrar. So Brewski normally allows any number. And uh, now it's the idea like, okay, maybe simple device only uh, asks for one. That seems to be simpler. And, and we didn't need, in that case, you don't need support for the um, uh, PKC S7 container format, which can contain multiple uh, certificates, but this was not in the embed TLS library. So at that point we thought, well, let's go for one certificate only. That's easier. But this kind of hampers future development. Uh, that's what we also identified, like two tier and three tier, tier CAs that are shown in the picture. So with intermediate CA certificates in cases where uh, also, for example, root CAs get uh, migrated to other root CAs, which, which could happen in these cases. Uh, and you don't want to do the bootstrap, uh, the onboarding again for all the devices. But you want to, yeah, ideally you want to use the EST protocol to, to allow these migrations easily. With that in mind, we thought, well, uh, why not think about the solution mm -hmm. that um, avoids this PKC7 container and that also allows multiple certificates to be distributed. So that's uh, proposed in an issue here. So you can see on the bottom, there's a format proposal here. So it's to use co-op multipart, which is an RFC defined mm -hmm. format. Basically, it's a very simple format in CBOR where you include multiple uh, payloads in a response. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, is basically payload, CBOR payload number 60, which encodes mm -hmm. just a number, which is the number of certificates that is available. And the 287 is a single X509 certificate, which is the first you get. So instead of asking for a certificate and getting the first, you basically get a number N and the first certificate, and N will tell you how many certificates there are in total. And you can use co-op to get them uh, one by one. Uh, that's the idea. So this is a possible way uh, to do it. So you split up, uh, if you have multiple of the CA search, you split it up. Uh, and that's where, where we are now. Um, so it's not yet been, uh, text has not been, yet been written, but uh, I think Michael agreed to this propo <laughs> proposal. It sounds good, but it would sound even better if there is anybody who can declare themselves to be better expert on this to also say yes. So if you know anybody else who... Yeah, yeah it's, I think some people who are not in this room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. ask, ask one maybe, of them. So uh, get, to get them involved. Raise the confidence yeah. level. Yeah, so that yeah, will be good. Yeah. yeah, I think that's good next way. So this was the final issue. Uh, okay. And we have, of course, the GitHub is open for issues and pull requests, etc. I think Michael has some reviews still open for PRs, uh, oh. or at least two. Uh, I can point you again to them. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> One of them about DNS SD. I think we can. Uh, we have to adapt that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. Thanks. Yeah, let, let, let's 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 first uh, <laughs> do do the other stuff of the queue. Yeah. yeah. I, I well, because this 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 no 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 this this one particularly depends on eighty three sixty six bits, right? So um. It, yeah, it does actually. Yeah, yeah, it's now built on that. That's one of the things yeah. we move the content yeah. uh, in eighty three sixty six bits yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I hope it's fine if I stay sitting here, then I can easier control and. Uh, things okay so um as already mentioned uh, what uh, in the uh, uh, weekly brewski uh, meetings uh, we figured out is that uh, we're kind of able to move all, all the documents forward faster if the advanced discovery options for brewski drafts are moved out of the ongoing working group drafts ae uh, cloud constraint brewski voucher prm um, and 8995 didn't have a framework to support that. Who would have thought that we have that many variations when we did 8995? So uh, that was another round, another life. Um, <clears throat> and uh, trying to have it piecemeal in every uh, document just didn't work out. Um, so that's basically what this document uh, proposes. And we consider that to be similar to splitting up Brewski work, AE and JWS voucher, um, which were um, directly adopted when uh, that changes was done. Um, 
Okay, so the example, why it's an issue, uh, I think we, we, we heard that already a little bit, Bruski AE. Um, we cannot reuse the same service name alone, right? What happens if a CMP only registrar would announce itself as Bruski registrar? Then an RSC 8995 only pledge would discover it and fail. And sure, it could try through all the uh, registrars and maybe ultimately discover an ESD capable registrar if it's lucky, uh, but it's really not a good design to uh, build and plan failure unless it's really a hard problem and you can't solve it easier, right? And because we do have a lot simpler solutions, uh, this is obviously not what we should do. So now we can do new service names and for um, uh, AE uh, with CMP, we'll also are trying to do this because we want to get it out uh, fast off the door, but it's not a general solution that will scale across, um, you know, uh, many different variations. Um, because we would need to introduce a new service name, not for every, um, you know, Brewski RFC, but for every combination of the different mechanisms that we have as soon as anybody wants to have one of the combinations, right? And it would also at some point in time, you know, the people on the uh, INS services registry would uh, raise uh, multiple eyebrows about that, right? Um, and even more importantly for us, we couldn't make uh, uh, Brewski proxies automatically support all the different variations, which is obviously something which we would very much like so that we can uh, deploy, implement uh, uh, Brewski proxies once and whatever new variation is being done, they don't care, they, they simply transparently support it. So this, the scope is the variations um, for uh, pledges, proxies, uh, discovering the registrars and the proxies, and then extensions for future discovery cases, registrar agents discovering pledges, registrars uh, maybe supporting Maza, right? So basically we don't want to define these things, but we want to do it, in, uh, specify it in a way that that can be done. And then the automatic proxies and do this all once and make it extensible by doing all the work through the registries that we're introducing. So here are the type of variations that we figured out we have. So we have three type of different variations for which we have more than one you know, variation um, uh, value, right? So uh, we can either um, have the registrar be in responder mode or we can have the pledge in responder mode. So that's RRM or PRM. Um, and that can be combined with any of the other options. So we can have the voucher in different formats, right? We have CMS, which is Brewski. We have Cose, which is uh, for constrained Brewski. And we've got Jose, which, uh, you know, the PRM people uh, prefer as their default, right? But who comes along and says some other combination is not uh, wanted by some other type of deployments in the future. And then we've got the third one, which are the enrollment protocols, right? EST, the good old one from 8995. Um, the uh, CMP alternative uh, introduced through Bruski AE, but obviously Bruski AE also defines on how you would do it for other enrollment protocols, like for example, the Neanderthal of enrollment protocol, SEP, which, you know, uh, a company uh, love to uh, that use for a long time, but there are others as well. So dot, 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 uh, the uh, Bruce KE has a couple of other mentioned. Um, so ideally, we should be able to make discovery work for every combination and not write new drafts uh, as soon as somebody wants to do these discovery. Of course, uh, there may be things uh, to bring in a new value right, and make new values work like SEP um, or so, but uh, not for us, but only for the people who want to bring in a new variation. The discovery mechanism shouldn't change. Um, and it also should be possible for different variants to be deployed together as ships in the night um, in the same network, so like a Brewski registrar 8995, independent of another registrar just doing CMP, right? So you, you don't want to force any registrar to have to support multiple ones just because the discovery sucks. So then we have the different discovery mechanism uh, variations. So the protocols that kind of uh, this draft currently explicitly considers GRAS, Core LF, and DNS, or DNS SD rather. Um, and I think one of the important things that had me worried was that I do think uh, in, in a couple of other ITF efforts uh, about you know energy and and uh, being uh, efficient with solutions, I very much fear that what we think now is a separate universe of itself, constrained IoT, that a lot of these things will be reused, right? Some people start uh, developing only for constrained environments, and then they're reusing the same implementations even in other environments, right? So I wouldn't uh, uh, 
want to guarantee that core LF as a discovery mechanism is not also used in non-constrained environments, right? I was actually looking through a, a couple of RFCs and I think I found some evidence that these mechanisms will also be used, for example, in HTTP context as, as a discovery mechanism, right? So we shouldn't say, oh, this discovery mechanism is only for this subset of Ruski variations that needs to be orthogonal, right? All the different variations need to be possible to support through any of the um, uh, protocols. So then the proxy functionalities, proxies don't care of all this crappy stuff. It's all just part of the connection, what voucher format I have, what endpoints I'm using, PRM or what crazy enrollment protocols. Proxy is just you know, connecting a transport connection. So it can be made uh, to do that for any variation. The main problem is the proxy also needs to forward whatever variation the registrar supports to the pledge so that the pledge can discover what variation is available. And if there are different registrars with different variations, then the proxy needs to open a separate socket for clients so that when a uh, client connects, then it knows, oh, it connects to that socket. That is the socket for, let's say, um, the PRM variation. If one registrar does PRM, oh, it connects to a different socket on the proxy. Oh, now I'm not going to the 8995 registrar, right? So that is the logic um, that a proxy needs to have. It doesn't need to know what these variations are, right? The text down here says, I've got variation uh, one and two supported by registrar A. I've got registrar B, which supports variation two and three. One very simple scheme for the proxy is simply to open for every variation that it sees at least one registrar for one socket. Um, and then basically whenever it gets a connection from that socket, it can still select the one or multiple registrars, one of them and connect to that registrar. Right, so that's that's the logic that that a proxy would have um, to support arbitrary, and it doesn't care what these variations are. Um, it just needs to, you know, connect. So, oops. Oh yeah. Okay. Oops. What? What happened here? Oh gee. There is a uh, a bug in the slide. Uh, wow. That is. Yeah. That's 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 crap. Wow, that's, uh, that's there, there was a PDF conversion issue. So let me quickly uh, share my screen. And that's, that shouldn't have. Yeah, that's crazy. What is it? Share screen. There's lots. Oh, I need to. Okay, stop that. Share screen. Accept. Um, and then, what is it? Window entire screen. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. So. Basically, the the registry uh, for for Bruski too, too small. Okay, yeah. full screen. Is that it? No, nope. this is it. Yep. Come on. Yep. Yeah. There we go. All right. Sorry for that. So three tables. The first table is defining contexts, which is basically the different set of service names uh, for which you know uh, one and the same set of rules apply. So we have a Bruski. Um, uh, context, which is the A and join registrar and proxy with TCP and the protocol uh, discovery protocol grasp. Protocol DNS SD, Bruski registrar, Bruski proxy also with TCP. And if somebody comes and say, oh, we want to support, uh, you know, a new discovery protocol, well, then basically, uh, you know, the expert for the table need to add an appropriate line for that. Um, Likewise, uh, and, and basically all the variations that we have, mode, V format, and enrollment uh, that I had in the prior slide, right? So these different variation types, they're all applicable. So we're defining that uh, they're all supported in this context. So if later on, for example, somebody says, we now need to discover masses or something similar to masses, we may have completely different uh, variation types. So we would uh, introduce new variation types. 
but not applicable to this lag between plaque and registra, but maybe only for masas, right? So that's basically why the table has the variation types, the protocol and the service names and compresses them down to uh, a simple context stream. So in Seabrewski then we would have all the same variation types also for GRASP, nothing changes here. It's easily under uh, distinguished because it's always a service name with the protocol. So it's UDP, Seabrewski is UDP and Brewski is TCP, right? Uh, DNS SD works the same way. And right at this point in time, we said Seabrewski core LF. Um, at some point in time, people may come and say, let's also add core LF to the Brewski table. One of the things I'm worried about but I'm not worried anymore when we have the table here, right? Uh, wh whoever wants to start having that just kind of ne needs to get the ask to get this added to the table. Um, then the Brewski pledge is the context for Brewski PRM. Um, all these things are applicable. Right now we're only de defining this for DNS SD. Um, Brewski pledge with TCP. So this is basically the different contexts we have. The second table is then that we're defining what the different values mean, right? So this RRM, this PRM, I did show this list textually in before, um, and this is the registry table that defines them, right? So basically says RRM is a value for the mode. It's usable in Brewski and constrained Brewski. Um, the reference is 8995 and this RFC. And it's also the default um, for both Brewski and constrained Brewski. So if, if nobody specifies an alternative like PRM or so, then you can assume that RRM is being used, right? And likewise in Brewski, the voucher format, CMS is the default. It's only the default in Brewski. So I've only shown a small uh, subset of this table. In constrained Brewski, of course, it is not CMS, uh, but CBOR, which is the default for the voucher format. So because the defaults are different, we also have different table entries here, right? So this is basically, it's, it's a little bit complex, but it's easier to have complexity in the table than somewhere hidden in some sections of some drafts that don't work together, right? So I mean, if I was implementing the thing, I'd rather work through a table than through a, a, a bunch of different documents where we're not even able to find all of them, right? So, and then ultimately, um, Michael came along and said, I don't want to, you know, have complex parsing because once I only have the variation type choices, RM, PRM, CMS, COSE, SEP, EST, those things, and I'm saying, okay, the following combination is supported. He said, please flatten the thing. Do uh, um, uh, variations where every variation is exactly one choice for each of the different options, right? So the default choice would be for Brewski, you have RRM with CMS and EST. That is what's defined in RFC 8995. And we could encode, yeah. 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 Um, right. So we could encode that as um, as RM CMS EST as a long string, but we're encoding it just as a default to be backward compatible, right? So in the same way, we're doing it for all the other things. We're um, encoding a full string, for example. Here, Jose CMP is now a non-default string that you can use. So we're running out of time. Uh, I've I've put some hopefully useful examples in there. Hmm? I think so, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. So I, I put two examples there. I don't have the time to go through them, right? So this is how simple GRASP is. This is how complex the same stuff in DNS SD is, but uh, the document explains all that stuff so that people will understand how to do it. And you see that in DNS SD, you have these text things, and they also have uh, one of the variation strings in there. So. Right, so some, some details. The pledge discovery, um, uh, as I already mentioned, more details that we worked through like in uh, PRM, but backward compatible. And uh, yeah, so improved details in the slide from work that we've did on Monday. Uh, so I need to update 01 to, uh, to fix those up. Um, so, um, so as the co-authors, I think uh, of, of the Brewski draft, we would like to see this moved to working group status as it's outsourced from existing working group drafts. Um, and then I think uh, one of the core uh, sections that needs to be filled in is the core LF uh, encoding, where um, ESCO had, had good uh, proposals that we need to pick one from. And that's it. Yeah, well, I'm not going to call the adoption at this moment. Uh, no, I mean the, we'll the, say the, yeah. more discussing uh, in the mailing list and uh, when 
uh, it gets better, uh, we will call it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we don't slow down the previous work. Uh, so be careful. No, I mean, the, the point was this, we wanted to have the flexibility of the discovery as part of the adopted work. So having flexible discovery across the different things was is already adopted work. We have moved it out into a different document. So it's not um, an ask whether to adopt uh, new work in this case. Um, so that's uh, near the end of this session. Uh, we have one more minute. Uh, actually, we received two more uh, presentations which come late. Uh, it's uh, we have slides uh, online so uh, people can you know uh, read it and uh, we hope the authors can uh, invoke uh, the uh, discussing in the mailing list then we'll discuss that in uh, scope of this uh, animal working group or not uh, it's one proposal uh, of a lightweight uh, grasp uh, and another one is the certificate uh, 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 risky uh, as well. So by the time we are done for today, uh, just in time, and hopefully see you all in Brisbane. See ya. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Good. Perfect timing. Sure. Okay. See you around. Yes, I was in Japan. In Japan also. That's not in the That's fine. Okay. See ya. Thank you.